Well, folks, how are we getting on here now in Thieb Seekle Cullen here on Fine Monday? I'm here with Jack Tierney. Oh, yeah. And Hi. Uh, we're going to be having a few podcasts on today now. And first up is Sesh Baby Talk, so we'll let them take it away from here. Sesh, Sesh Baby, Baby Talk. Talk. Oh, yeah. Skirt, Let's skirt. go for Sesh Baby. Here, hashtag What is up, guys? Welcome back to Sesh Baby Talks. Today we have three very special guests. We've got Harry, Owen, and Fred. If you want to uh, introduce yourselves, lads. Um, sup, Sean. My name is Harry. I'm 16, and I like to travel. My favourite places include Dubai, Paris, and South Mevan. Uh, hi, Sean. My name is Owen. I'm 16, and I enjoy playing FIFA with the boys at the weekend. Sean, my name's Fred. I'm 15, and I packed Eden Hazard twice. Also, I would like to shout out Sesh Baby and Mevin Lad. Yup. Uh, that's beautiful, lads. Uh, so we've got a very simple game. I ask questions, you buzz in and answer. Do uh, you want to show off your buzzers, uh, lads? Harry, go on. This is mine. Fred. Oh. And Owen. <laughs> beautiful. All right, I think we're ready. Uh, first question. Who is the president of the FAI? John Delaney. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry McEnany. That is correct, lad. Uh, that's a point for Fred. When was the Gaelic Athletic Association founded? I heard clock there first, so. Uh, 19... That is incorrect. You're out. Okay. 1872. That is also incorrect. Uh, it's up to you, Harry. 1874. All right, well, it's wrong, wrong, but uh, sure, we'll move on anyways to the next question. Who is Ireland's rugby coach? Yes. Joe Schmidt. That is... Andy Farrell. Correct. Fourth, que- fourth and final question of this round. How many majors has Rory McIlroy won in his career? Four. That is correct. Well done, Harry. So at the end of that round, Fred's got two, Harry's got one, and uh, Owen has zero. There. Moving on uh, to the second round. How many league goals has Alan Shearer scored in his career? 250. Two. <laughs> 280. I'll give it to you, I'll give it to you. So that's a point for Owen. Who has recently surpassed Kobe Bryant for his most amount of points scored in the NBA? LeBron James. That is correct, Harry. A third question. What is the most watched sporting event in the world? I heard Owen first then. KSI v Logan Paul 2. <laughs> oh, that is incorrect, Owen. The World Cup final. Beautiful, Fred. Well done. That is correct. And for the last question of this round, how many league titles has Man United won? 20. That is correct. Uh, So at the end of that round... Oh, Fred's got four. Owen's got one and Harry's got one. Okay, we got that. And now it's the final, final round. What is the world's largest river? The River Nile. Yes, Harry, that is correct. Second question. Who was the first man in space? I think, I think yeah, that was Fred. N- Neil Armstrong. Uh, that is incorrect, Fred. Uh, Yuri Jerkov. <laughs> it's, wait, uh, it's, oh uh, yeah, I'll, uh, no. No, that's incorrect, that's incorrect. Yuri Gargan. Oh, yes, correct. Uh, We've got a bit of a different question here. It's a bit, you know, it's a bit exciting. Name two extinct animals. Uh, dodo. And um. Ah, uh, sorry, you ran out of time there. That was Fred. Dodo and dinosaur. Yes, that is correct. Uh, for final question, bit of a bit of a maths question. What is the first prime number? Yeah, uh, Owen, Owen. Uh, one? Uh, that's incorrect. Yeah, Harry? 
Um, two. <laughs> yes, well done. So at the end of that round, Fred's got five. What? Well, Harry's got three, and Owen's still on one. So uh, at the that's that's the end of our uh, our third and final round, and our winner today is Fred. What do you have to say for yourself, Fred? Uh, it was just great to be here, and uh, Todd Sean was a great host. So thanks for having me. Cheers, that cheer. Any any uh, final words from Owen there? I just want to congratulate Fred and just thanks to yourself for having oh, us. Fair flip. Uh, how are you? Uh, I think th- this is a bit rigged. Um, I clearly said jury. I think I should have got the point for that. But anyway. Jury is still incorrect there, Harry. But uh, yeah, sure, we'll move on. Congratulations uh, to Fred. Uh, con- yeah, congratulations to Fred. Well done. And uh, that, that's, uh, that concludes Sesh Baby Talks. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Fingless and Flynn, the Film Fanatics podcast. I'm Callum. And I'm Amy. And we're going to be talking about the Oscar nominations. For Best Director, we have Martin Scorsese, The Irishman, Todd Phillips, Joker, Sam Mendes, 1917, Quentin Tarantino, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Bong Joon-ho, Parasite. So according to the reviews from both the audience and critics, Parasite has the highest chance of winning the most awards. Now, in my personal opinion, I think Sam Mendes for 1917 is going to win. Because 1917 is completely one shot. So having to direct that would be the hardest thing to do. And it, it costed $90 million to make this film. And it made $200 million in the box office. I agree because it would be so well rehearsed. And if they make one mistake, they have to start filming all over again. Now moving on to supporting actor, we ha- actress, we have Kathy Bates, Richard Jewell. Laura Dern, Marriage Story. Scarlett Johansson, Jojo Rabbit. Florence Pugh, Little Women, and Margot Robbie for Bombshell. Now, I think that Laura Dern is going to win because she does a great job of capturing how a, divo- a divorce lawyer does their job. The dynamic between Scarlett Johansson and Laura Dern was perfect. She performed a monologue that was a minute and a half long, which, which would have taken a lot of time and effort to learn. I definitely agree with you there because Laura Dern is a fantastic actress. She's brilliant in this film. Moving on to supporting actor. We have Tom Hanks, A Beautiful Day in the Neighbourhood, Anthony Hopkins, The Two Popes, Al Pacino, The Irishman, and Joe Pesky, The Irishman, and Brad Pitt, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I think it's going to be between Tom Hanks and Al Pacino because Tom Hanks in A Beautiful Day in the Neighbourhood, if he were to dress up and walk around as Mr. Fred Rogers all day, you would think it's the actual Fred Rogers. Fred Rogers. And Al Pacino, he literally looks like a gangster and his performance in The Irishman literally screams his name. I have to disagree with you, Callum. I think Brad Pitt from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood will win. He's considered to be the favourite and his performance was praised by Leonardo DiCaprio. It is considered one of the best career turns and Britain's Sunday Times said well-natured Pitt steals the show. Now the nominations for leading actress. Cynthia Enrio, Harriet. Scarlett Johansson, Marriage Story. Saoirse Ronan, Little Women. Charlize Theron, Bombshell. And Renee Zellweger for Judy. Personally, I think Scarlett Johansson in Marriage Story will win. Her character is going through a lot with her mental health during this divorce and Scarlett Johansson portrays what it is like for a woman going through divorce and all the struggles she has to face. I'd have to disagree with you there because I think Saoirse Ronan is going to win this award. And I'm not saying that because she's Irish, up the Irish. I'm saying this because Little Women is as detailed as the book and I think Saoirse does a very good job at portraying what her character in the book was like. People have said that it's exactly how people who read it imagined her character would be like for leading actor we have Antonio Bandir A Pain and Glory Leonardo DiCaprio Once Upon a Time in Hollywood Adam Driver Marriage Story Joaquin Phoenix Joker and Jonathan Price The Two Popes I think my boy Joaquin Phoenix is going to win this award but I think Adam Driver does have a chance 
Joaquin Phoenix does great at portraying how Art Fleck went from being a normal man with a mental health disorder to a psychopath that is the Joker. His voice that he uses makes him sound very depressed and psychotic, which is what the Joker is. His costume and makeup is very detailed as well. For me, I think Adam Driver and Marge Story will win this one because it because the argument scene with Scarlett Johansson was the best argument scene I've seen in my life. He's incredible at portraying his character's anger and hatred towards his ex-wife. And this powerful, heart-wrenching scene left me speechless. Finally, the nominees for Best Picture. Ford vs. Ferrari. The Irishman. Jojo Rabbit. Joker. Little Women. Marriage Story. 1917. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And Parasite. Now... This is a tough one to think about because all of these films are brilliantly made. But in the end, I think it's between Marriage Story 1917 and Parasite. Marriage Story because the acting, the writing, the cinematography, the sound design and the direction is all brilliant. All the scenes feel so real and raw and I develop such empathy towards the characters including the son Henry. 1917 on the other hand shows us that people in the war are human which I feel is very important because often in war humans are portrayed as ruthless and violent. It's an all around showstopper and in my opinion it is a powerful phenomenon. The fact that it was shot in one take makes it so captivating. It's never really been done before and is a milestone in the film industry. Another one that stands a chance is Parasite. Parasite is a gorgeous film. The cinematography, sound design and the acting is great. It has also received the highest ratings from both critics and audiences alike. I would, it would also become the first ever foreign film to win the Oscar for Best Picture. So I would love if Parasite were to win. That's all for today's podcast. Thanks very much for listening. I think we can all agree the nominations are very well deserved. I can't wait to see who wins. Make sure to tune into our next podcast where, we t- where we will talk about the Oscar winners. This has been the Fingless and fin- Flynn fin- Film Fanatics and we'll see you next time. Hi, welcome to Bangers and Matt. Today we will be talking about an upcoming boxing match between two YouTubers, Gib and Jake Paul. This is a professional debut of Jake Paul's professional fighting career. This fight will only be streamed on DAZN. A little information about Jake Paul is uh, he's an American YouTuber born in Ohio and uh, he's got uh, 19.1 million subscribers. He's not very well liked in the YouTube community itself and he is known for terrible songs, being an idiot and doing stupid stuff online. Uh, His rival Gib is uh, an English YouTuber with 2.1 million subscribers and is great pals with the YouTuber squad, Sidemen. He is not part of the squad, but is a great friend to all of them. Gibbs' friend KSI recently got challenged to a fight by Jake Paul, and he refused and gave Gibbs the fight instead, and said, if you beat him, you can fight me. Guys, what are your opinions about the fight, and what do you think is going to happen? I believe that Gibb will flatten Jake in the third round with a uppercut with the left hand, and it will be called off straight away. Yeah, well, I guess we never really saw Jake Paul against a proper fight, even though he went against Deji and got pretty beaten up by that as well. I think the fight's going to go pretty well for uh, Gibbs, as I think he'll knock him out in the second round. And the same as Gaz, I say hit him with a big up lefter and see how it goes from there. Tickets are nineteen ninety nine to watch on Dazan the Zone. Thank you. Well, that's all from Bangers and Mash today, and uh, we'll hope we see you next time. And we get, we can't wait to see the results of the fight. Hi, and welcome back to We Really Love Ireland. We will be talking about each Love Island episode for the next six weeks. I'm Avian and I'm joined with Sophie, Elaine and Lucy. So girls, what's the goss? What's the tea? What's the curry? Elaine, what do you think of Luke T and Luke M? In my opinion, they're only new, so you can't judge a book by their cover. But 
Luke T seems a bit like odd and a bit backstabbing so far and I feel like Luke M is gonna end up not being friendly with him and more friendly with like Callum and Connor and yeah but he looks a bit like Justin Bieber so we'll see how it goes. Fair enough that's a good answer. Now Sophie what do you think about Rebecca? I think she's very nice. <laughs> well that's the wrong answer so I think we should try that again so what do you think of Rebecca? She's a very sly girl. That's the right answer. Now, Lucy, you don't really watch Love Island that often, and we just wanted to know, what are your thoughts on Paige? I'm not a fan of her. She just gives off these vibes, and she also cheated on Lewis Capaldi with his best friend, so, you know, that's a bit bad out. And, yeah, and she's with Finley at the moment, and they're actually an okay couple, but, you know, they won't last long. So, yeah, I know. Right, and now Sophie, what do you think about Leanne and Mike? Because from what I'm hearing about them two, it's just not going to last. What do you think? I think Leanne and Mike are last season's Michael and Amber. Oh, the shade on that. Now, Elaine, the twins, they're fake, they're fabulous, they keep touching their hair. Anything (laughs) else to say about them? I actually really like the twins because, especially since Eve has left, Jess has really kind of come into her own and, you know, she acts just to talk to people rather than literally going up to the lads and, like, pulling them for a chat, the two of them together, which is a bit odd, but, you know, each to their own, but in my opinion, it's a bit weird. Fair enough, fair enough. (laughs) Now, Lucy, Sean's niece, I mean Shanice, what do you think of her? I really like her. She seems really genuine and all, and she's just is having a bit of a hard time at the moment the past two weeks have kind of been bad for getting mugged off by Connor a G twice so you know the lads must be seeing like mug written on her face you know <laughs> but yeah so hopefully the right man will come into the villa and yeah yeah I know I understand where you're coming from there it's very harsh when especially you've been mugged off by the same lad twice Um, now Sophie Connor and Sophie oh she's the same name as you as well that's <laughs> funny isn't it now Connor and Sophie Do you think they will last, and do you think he's too sensitive? I don't think they're going to last too long, because I think Connor, OG Connor, is too sensitive um, for Sophie. Fair enough, that's not a bad answer at all. And now, Naz, is he a girl's boy, is he a boy boy? Who did he fit in with the most now, Elaine? Who do you think? No, see, loads of people think Naz is a bit fake, but I think Naz is just waiting on the right girl to come in. You know, no one's really there for him at the moment, but, like, he's going okay. He'll be fine. He'll yeah. get someone eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not bad at all. And now, Sean and Callum, in my opinion, I think they could actually win the whole thing just from oh, being no. so cute, you know. But, Sophie, no. what do you think? I think that they could end up winning it because I think they're... Very good together. <laughs> Elaine, I'm hearing you say no about this. Why is that? Yeah, but Sean is so, like, obsessive and she's a bit, like, OTT with Callum. Like, you know, chill out. It's only been, like, a week, you oh, know? Okay, like, it's a bit right. much. Now, Elaine, the last question's for you here. <laughs> Connor with the G. Any thoughts on that? Um. Well, I think, like, he got he left too early. Like, you know, he had a chance with Shanice. He kind of blew that. And Sophie thing, that didn't really work out. But Rebecca mugged him off as well. So, yeah. you know, bit of both. Very harsh, very harsh. Now, girls, thank you so much for answering those questions. And I'm afraid that's all we have for today. But if you watch tonight's episode, you'll actually get... You might get to t- send in a text tomorrow and we can actually listen to your text. So that's all we have for today. Later. Bye.